everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin, and today I'm bringing you another Wizarding World of Harry Potter review, that being set number 75953, Hogwarts Whomping Willow. This set connects to the last set that I reviewed, that being the Hogwarts Great Hall set. This set contains 753 pieces and retails for $69.99 in the U.S., so... Overall, this is going to be very exciting to look at since there's a lot of interesting aspects within the set. We have some nice minifigures, which if we look down here on the box, we can see them. Like the last set, since this set is over $50, this set will not include a speed build with its video. So, yeah, let's take a look at the box. So, I already showed the front. Right here on the top, we got the minifigures on the top. We got the back of the box, which also shows like the Great Hall box. Right here, you can see if we zoom in, we have that it connects to the Great Hall set to form one nice big Hogwarts castle right there. And then we have some other minor features right here, which you can see that we got the Flying Ford Angula car right there. And then if you scroll down a little bit, we got the Whomping Willow which I think this might be the first time that we're getting that inside Lego form. We also have the tree stuck in there and you can see the play feature which I will show in more detail with the final verdict. We also see that we can fit a minifigure underneath the tree that can go inside. And then we just have a minor showing of Gryffindor Tower right there which you can see that we have Harry and Ron inside their beds in the Gryffindor common room. And then we have the back of the set. We have some other play features right here, which you can see we have Hermione and Seamus Finnegan right there. And then we have Professor Snape. So overall, I'm really happy and excited to open up this set and see what we got inside. Let's just show the bottom of the box, which we have the barcode and other stuff. We have the side of the box, upside down. There we go. And then we have the other side, right here, the little Lego Life advertisement. So yeah, let's open this up. Okay, so within the set we got bag number five, bag number four, bag number three, bag number two, and then finally bag number one which looks like it includes the flying car and we get Ron and Harry in there. That's pretty cool. We also have a sticker sheet within the set. You can see right here we got these stickers for the set. We got some portraits and stuff that will be shown on there. We have two stickers for the car. Most of this is for the castle. We have two stickers right here for the Whomping Willow. It's pretty cool that we got a lot of stickers. I mean, though I don't really care for stickers, I guess it's okay. We got two instruction booklets, which I will put us down to see them. We got two instruction booklets, book one and then book two. Let's take a look at the instructions. So right here we have the wind guy, and then we have this right here, which is the final model that brings you right to instruction book two. No advertisements inside that one. And then we have book two, which on the back we have one advertisement for the Lego Harry Potter sets, which right here I own all of these. Currently all of these are have been reviewed, so that's pretty cool. We got the piece count on these pages right here. We have another page for the piece count right here, and then we have the minifigure checklist including all the characters that come within the sets, two for Fantastic Beasts and then three for Harry Potter. Of course we're missing the Quidditch match and the Hogwarts Express minifigures on there. Then we have a Fantastic Beasts advertisement, which of course both of those sets will be coming August 1st everywhere. Then we have a Lego Life advertisement with Harry Potter right there. And then that brings us all the way to the final model of the entire set. So I'm just gonna 
put the instructions back over there. Since there's no speed build included inside this set's review, I'm just going to start building the set and I will bring you right to the final verdict. Okay, so here is the final model for the Hogwarts Whomping Willow set. So overall, this was a very nice build and it does connect to the giant Hogwarts Great Hall, which is over there, which I will be showing a connection between both of the sets. First, let's take a look at the extra pieces that are included within the set. Let's take a nice zoom in on those. So we got eight wands inside this set with three extra ones, which you can see we have one in black, one inside the dark brown, and then one in brown. And then we just have one of the leftover pieces from the dark tan ones. Then here are some of the other extra pieces that are included within the set. Lots of different colors. It's very nice to get a bunch of nice extra pieces like these. And then of course we get a brick separator, which of course will go right up there out of the way. I'm gonna push these all out so then we can just take an overall look at the set. Okay, so here is the overall model. Like the Hogwarts Great Hall, this set is tall enough that it does not fit within the screen. So we're gonna take a look at the minifigures first like we did with the Hogwarts Great Hall review. Starting off with our first minifigure, we have Harry Potter who pretty much comes within all of the Harry Potter sets in the wave. So right here you can see we got his short legs inside dark gray. We have some printing on the front of his torso and we have some printing on the back. He comes with a dark brown wand like he does in pretty much all the other sets. His facial expression is the same one that's been used in the past two reviews. You can see that. We can take off his hair piece and then you can see that other facial expression right there. Might as well put his hair on so then you can see that as well. You can see his other facial expression with his hair. His scar is in a nice position that his hair doesn't block it, like the hair piece that's included within the LEGO Dimensions pack. So overall, this is a very nice version of Harry and only comes within this one set. The next minifigure that we got is Ron Weasley, which of course is very nice to get him. This is a new minifigure for him as well. New printing on the torso on the front and the back. Same hair and head piece as the other Ron Weasleys that we've seen before. We can take off his hair piece to see his other facial expression right there. I'll put his hair piece on so then you can see that one as well. And then we can spin him back around. Same short legs, same regular brown wand, and yeah, that's pretty much all for Ron Weasley. The next minifigure that we got is Hermione Granger, which is also inside her Hogwarts uniform, unlike Harry and Ron. We also have one more student within their Hogwarts uniform, which we'll get to next which it's very nice to see that we got Hermione inside her Hogwarts uniform. Though one thing I dislike is that this minifigure does also come inside the Hogwarts Great Hall set and also within the Quidditch match set, so technically they didn't make a new version of Hermione, which, I mean, I would have liked, but, you know, it's still very nice. We got the printing on the front of the torso for Gryffindor and also printing on the back. I'll take off her hairpiece, so then you can see her facial expression underneath. I'll also throw her hair piece on there so then you can see that facial expression. Same head and hair piece as the other ones and also same wand inside that dark tan color, very nice. So yeah, that is all for Hermione Granger. The next student that we got is Seamus Finnegan, who is a very nice, interesting, odd choice for a minifigure to include in this set. Since this is based off year two, it's pretty cool to get him. He has the same legs and torso as Hermione's minifigure, since he is part of Gryffindor House. Has the same wand inside that dark tan color. Has a face printing on both sides. I will take that hair piece off. This is also the same head that is used on the boy inside the Jurassic Park set, which if you haven't seen that review, I will link it in the description below. And he has a very nice hair piece. I really like to get that hair piece inside that collar. It's very useful. So yeah, that's pretty much all for Seamus Finnegan. The next minifigure that we got is Professor Severus Snape, which this is a new version of his minifigure. He also comes within the Quidditch match set as well. He has some printing on his legs and some printing on his torso. He has some printing on the back of his torso very lightly. 
we have a double-sided facial expression if you take off his hair you can see one and then we can see his other facial expression which I will put his hair on so then you can take a look at that as well he does come with a black wand and compared to the other Snape minifigure is very nice so let's take a look at both the this version and the 2010-2011 version at the same time. Okay, so here is a comparison between the 2018 and 2010 versions of Severus Snape, which you can definitely see the difference between the older and the newer minifigures, seeing that the newer one has printing on the legs, unlike the older one. And you can also tell that this one is from the first year of Hogwarts, as he has the purple on his shirt, unlike the older Snape. You can see that the older one has a cape, unlike this one. You can f take off the cape Right here you can see no printing on the back of the older Snape's torso, some printing on the newer ones. You can put down his cape and then you can take off both of their hair pieces and you can see you can see that one of them does not have printing on the back of their head and one does and then you can compare both of their facial expressions. I do think that this version is definitely a better facial representation of Snape. So yeah, that's very nice to get both of them. Now our final minifigure that we got within the set is Argus Filch right here, which you can see that we got some printing on the legs. I might as well remove his accessory, which is this very nice piece right here. This we have seen inside the last two sets that I reviewed. Let's straighten him up a little bit, just make him look very nice. You can see we got some printing on the legs. I think that this would have been a nice opportunity for dual molded legs or something, you know, but I really like the key printing right there on his legs. We have some printing on the front of the torso. We have some printing on the back of the torso. He also includes a new hair piece, which you can see has the flesh coloring right up there, and you can see that it is also in that dark gray color. It's very nice to get that piece. You can take off his hair piece, and then you can see both of his facial expressions right here, that being the second one on the other side. Let's put his hair piece on so then you can see that. So yeah, that's pretty much all for this minifigure. Let's take a comparison between the 2010 and this version. Okay, so here is a quick comparison between the 2010 and the 2018 versions of Argus Filch. Right here you can see the printing is pretty much the same on the legs. You can see that the older one does have the key printing and the newer one does as well. I do prefer the newer versions printing to the older ones. You can also see the different colors within the shirts, sort of like the similar printing, but it's just a little bit different with the coloring. It's very nice to see a little bit of a difference. You can see that there is no printing on the back of the older one, and there's also no double facial expression. Let's just, for silliness, put both of their hairs on the different characters just to see how they would look. Though, you know, you can definitely see a difference with them. I do like this one's facial expression much more than the older ones. The hair piece is like sorta of, eh, eh, I guess, per se. I mean, I don't really care for the newer hairpiece compared to the older one, but I do think that for like this style of minifigure, that being like from year two, I guess it's good enough for what they had in mind for Filch. Now that the minifigures are out of the way, we might as well take a look at some of these smaller builds. Let's start off with the first one that we got, that being the Flying Ford Angula car. Okay, so here's a quick look at the Flying Ford Angula car right here. This is a very nice vehicle that we got right here. I really love the design of it. There's a bunch of very nice interesting play features in here. You can see that we got a trunk which can open up right here. You can see that we got two pieces of luggage right here that you can pop right out. Those fit in very nicely. You can just toss them in like such. There's a nice little holding spot for both of them. Which you can see right here, we got the one of these stickers, that being 7990TD for the license on the back. We also have the same sticker on the front of the car. We have some printing on these, which are on the handles of the car, which you can open this up right here and you can fit a minifigure in. Same thing as this other door, you can open that up. Also like all regular ordinary cars, this one can definitely go back and forth with the nice wheels. Here's a nice quick look at the bottom of the car. Here's a nice top view of that car. 
It's a very nice, interesting look at the model. Compared to the previous versions, you can't fit too many figures in here, which is what a lot of people actually wanted. You can remove this little piece right here to get your minifigures inside which you can see inside this little spot we only have like a place for like one character since we do have these short legs we can throw them in like such and then you can see that sort of like the boat you have to like stagger them up a little bit have to put them like behind each other but you know I guess it's like good for the way that it is I would have preferred if there was like two seats for the minifigures but that would have made the car a little bit like odd looking for say but you know, there's probably a way to do it and I will probably have it in the picture of the overall set. The second smaller build that we got right here is the Whomping Willow Tree, which this is a interesting model as some of the pieces aren't actually really stationary on this model. We got this little turning feature right here, which you can see turns the tree around a little bit. You can see that it moves the arms. The arms are all connected by these ball joints. I don't really want to move them too much because you can see that we have these pieces right here, which I will take a nice quick zoom in over here. You can see that we got these pieces right here and right there, which like to fall off since they aren't really connected. You can see if I turn this around a little bit that they only go in so much. I'll take one out just to show. You can see that there really isn't like anywhere to put it. It's like only a little bit of a thickness of a stud. You can toss it right in there, but you know. It's still okay for say, since the Whomping Willow is used to like dropping like big branches and stuff from it. You can zoom out a little bit. You can see that we got two stickers used in here, one for right here on this area and then another one right there both the same sticker just faced in a somewhat of a different direction it's very nice to see the Whomping Willow like portrayed in Lego form though I would have liked to see it be a lot more like the video games version of the Whomping Willow you can see we also have a nice little spot right here which you can throw a minifigure in like we have Ron which we can conveniently place right there. You can see that you can fit an actual small miniature figure in there. I'll remove his wand so then you can see that one minifigure does seem to fit in here and since those legs are the style of the year two and three characters they can fit down underneath there so that's pretty cool. But overall it's a very nice model. Like I said before, these can move up and down in any direction that you want. And also these right here can turn, so then you can see that. Overall, it's pretty much held together very nicely, but I mean, it's not too like great of a model for like the price of the set. The main part of the set that makes this worth it, though, is the one big humongous piece right here that we got of Hogwarts. Which, I mean, it isn't that big, but it's a very nice representation of a side build of Hogwarts. Hopefully they make more of these so then we can connect these all together to make one giant, like, minifigure scale Hogwarts castle. Since we did confirm that the direct-to-consumer is going to be a miniature scale model. You can see right here we got a little bit of an opening gate area right here, which you can see we can throw our flying Ford Angular car right there. It can drive right through past that area. It's very nice. I really like that that can work like such. It's a nice little opening. We have a lot of stickers used for this part. We have stickers right here, stickers right there. We have two stickers used right there, and then we have two more on these side right here. Overall, I think it's very nice, like the way that they combine the different colors using like the different nougat colors and also the dark, lighter tan and the darker tan and a little bit of dark gray that they used. It's very nice to see that. We also have a little bit of like shrubbery every so often like right there with those pieces which I did show inside the Aragog set and also inside the last one. We can also maneuver ourselves all the way back over here to the other side of the building which this is where more of the fun stuff pops up. You can see we have our first little room right here, which this, I have to say, is probably Snape's office. You can see we have two more stickers used in here. 
If I move the model slightly over here, you can see one right there hiding. And then if I move the model over this way, you can see we have another one that's hiding over there. Overall, it's very nice. We got some potion ingredients and stuff. We have a little candle in the background, and then we also have some printed pieces on this plate on this table right here, which you can see we have a 2x2 two two right here, newspaper, Daily Prophet, with the boy who lived on it, which you can see we have Harry Potter. Very nice picture right there of Harry. We also have a 1x2 tile right here showing you how to do the Wingardium Leviosa spell, which is very nice. We also have a little ink bottle with quill and also a little lamp to show off. We also have this over here, which has some little tools that I guess you can use. Moving on from there, we have just the opening again, which we have the top of the Hogwarts area. I guess you can put minifigures there. We can put Filch just patrolling around after dark with his lantern. And then down here you can throw Snape, so then Snape can be in his office telling off Harry and Ron for doing something of some sort, which that's pretty cool. And then we move ourselves right along over here to the next room, which this is the taller of the areas. We have this little opening right here, which if we open that up, you can see we have a little green frog in there. Let's take a zoom in on that frog, because why not? There we go. We got a little frog right here, very nice. No new changes to that mold or design, no printing on him. We have a nice little place for where with a broom right there for Filch. You have some more potion ingredients inside this room. You also have another sticker right here you can see. If I point us up a little bit, move us around. There's a nice little look at that sticker for another little portrait. Then if you move up a level, we have a bedroom right here, which I will have to position my camera differently. So I might as well just move on to the last room and then I can go up a floor or two, which you can see this is another part of the potions room. This is connected right here. You can see that this sort of like moves a little bit, but it doesn't really move freely. It's just to keep it connected nice and happy and solid. We have some little cauldrons. You can see one's exploding right here and one has a little stirrer in it. We have a nice little candle and some potion ingredients in the background. You can also see that we have two more portrait stickers, one right there in the background and then one more over here in the background hiding behind that little goblet right there and then that brings us to this area over here which I will have to study the camera a little bit better okay so here is the other room which you can see this is sort of like a miniature Gryffindor common room you can see that we have another sticker right there in the back with the Gryffindor flag we have two beds which these I think are designed very nicely you can see you can plop these right out they're only held on by those one by twos with the stud in the center you can see the bed overall we have a we have a two by three tile and then a one by two cheese slope and then we have one of these right there so then if you have your minifigure, you can just plop them down in their bed, and they also have a nice spot for their feet so then they don't slip off. It's very nice. You can have Harry inside his bed, and also you can have Ron in there. You can throw Harry in there, and then we have Ron. We have Ron in there. It's a tight fit. Let me just remove his wand. I think that's probably the problem with these. You gotta have their wands removed. Remove Harry's wand then everybody's happy. I also remove the bed and just toss them in there so then you can see that. You can have Ron inside the bed. And then nice easy fit. You got Harry and Ron inside their dormitory sleeping and we also have another candle in there. I also really like the design of like the rooms. How you can see that it's just like one big pole going all the way up and you can also see the windows and everything. I really think that they did a really amazing job with the Harry Potter sets. I guess we have a small owlry right here, which I guess is pretty nice. We have like a um, uh, one by two with nothing on it, and then we have an ink bottle right there with the quill. And then also we have Hedwig up there, which is pretty nice since, you know, Hedwig comes along on the wild car ride. And then going all the way up, we have the last 
of the building, ending all the way up there with that one ski piece right there inside the sand green color. So that brings us all the way back down to the bottom of the building, and we can zoom out. And then the potions room, we can just throw Seamus Finnegan and Hermione, so then they can be working on something in the potions classroom. So, I mean, overall, this is a very nice and beautiful set. I love all the minifigures, mainly from the set. And, you know, the side build for Hogwarts is very nice. One thing that I forgot to do in this video that I'm gonna do right now, though, is I'm gonna connect this piece to the bigger Hogwarts. Okay, so I've gotten to the part of the video where I wanna connect the Hogwarts Great Hall to the other side of this little Hogwarts build. So right here you can see that we have the Hogwarts Great Hall, which if I do turn it over this way, you can see right here that we got, if I zoom in right here by the staircase, you can see that we got two Technic Hole pins right there, which you can put in right here if we move over this piece. You can see that these have the Technic pieces that can fit in those holes, and then you can easily connect and there you go we got the castle connected I'll zoom out you can see that connects right there in the corner though I don't really recommend doing that because I mean I like them better as a separate build I think that it would be better if like it could be connected somewhere else as you can see if I turn it around a little bit can turn around the model so then you can see both sides of the connection. You can see that the staircase does get a little bit messed up right there and you can't really go the entire way on the suit on the staircase. I'll zoom in right there. You can see that it hits that little light. I might be doing something wrong but I don't think so but that is where the set is supposed to connect and there's a little slight problem with the staircase but I mean I guess you could just jump it as an invisible step or something so yeah that's pretty much all for this video remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know every time I upload a new video if you like what you saw in this video remember you could go down in the description below to my Amazon Associates page where you can buy stuff that you see me review which gives a little bit of money to me which helps the channel which is awesome so yeah that's it for now and I will see you next time bye